Today's article is Reichauer and Jansen's The Group. This comes from their book, which was written in 1985, titled The Japanese Today Change and Continuity. I wanted to first go over a summary of the group model, which we studied in the Japan Phenomenon article that's written by Sugimoto. Remember that the group model of Japanese society has three main lines of argument. Japanese have a personality that lacks a fully developed ego or independent self. This is very closely associated with the term amai, that emic term that means essentially indulgent dependency. The second uh, line of argument for the group model is that at the interpersonal and intergroup level, harmony is emphasized within the group. Uh, this means subordinate to superior relationships are maintained and vertical loyalties are dominant. Uh, the third line of argument is at the intergroup level, integration and harmony are maintained between Japanese groups, making Japan a consensus society. And that essentially explains the Hashins. It's one of the largest and most influential new religious movements in Japan. And then I also inputs on the slide, but they're also uh, official internet support groups in Japan that provide assistance, resources, and support for various, various issues. Um, and these online communities and platforms are a way for individuals to connect with others who are experiencing you know, similar challenges, seek guidance, or share information. Has emphasis on the group manifests itself in everyday life for Japanese people in terms of activities, attitudes, language, communication style, personalities. These are all things where you would see, uh, you know, characteristics of, you know, group characteristics, I guess. So in terms of activities, what you'd find is almost everywhere you go in band, you see prolific group activities. You have company group outings, a drinking bar with one's co-workers and boss. You have tour groups all over Japan. Um, hot spots have communal bathing. You'd also see things like um, sports activities where everybody gets together to do things like morning tasso exercises in the park. Uh, other things in terms of attitudes would be, you know, these are things that represent a group, more of group mentality. Of course, in that case, a group player is appreciated more than an individual ambition. And Japanese have a saying, the nail that sticks up gets hammered down. And generally speaking, uh, Japanese distrust somebody with verbal skills, like strong verbal skills. They feel as if um, you stand out too much. They dislike individual self-assertion. They often see American or North American style of negotiation, for example, as too blunt or the communication style. In terms of language and communicative style, um, you know, there's an attempt to maintain harmony, to use words like let versus please. Um, there is a lot of uh, in-group versus out-group language differences where you would uh, speak to someone in your in-group in a certain way versus, you know, speak to someone in your out-group differently. Uh, they like to be subtle and indirect in their speech. Um, I think we mentioned in class the other day that Japanese, there's a reluctance to say no, right? But like, it often tends to be very uh, ambiguous if somebody is saying no to you at least from her perspective. Uh, they resist open displays of affection and emotion, and decision-making is often about getting consensus, right? So um, close majorities, majority decisions make Japanese uneasy, and they're often words and phrases that exemplify uh, kind of interconnectedness, uh, group emphasis. For example, these two right here, um, you ask somebody how they are, they might respond with, thanks to you, I'm doing well. Right, so invoking the sense of the interconnectedness. And then when you meet somebody for the first time, you say, Hajimashite, and then Yoroshiko onaishimasu. Hajimimashite means basically nice to meet you. Yoroshiko onaishimasu means please be kind to me. So again, sort of invoking a sense of um, you take care of me, I take care of you, that sense of interpersonalism. Uh, I, I came across a couple of these. Uh, so here are some things that sort of exemplify, you know, language and signs that you might see. Uh, please be a responsible dog owner. Clean up, clean up after your dog. That would be obviously a sign that we might see here in Canada, United States. Uh, your safety is your responsibility. Be careful, safety first. Uh, another, you know, indication that safety is about individual responsibility. Now this one, uh, it says in Japanese, Nameyo Kungoji, which means let's stop poop pollution. I guess you can translate that as poop pollution. So using the let's or shall we, you know, it's a collective effort. So, uh, you know, let's treat each other well and, and stop this particular behavior. So the signs sort of exemplify the difference of, of language communicative style on signs. Personalities, as you might guess, 
Uh, people, Japanese people, prefer people who are uh, cooperative, reasonable, understanding of others, avoid confrontation, and who have smooth and affable personalities. Uh, one of the things that Ray Shower and Jansen talk about is that the, these characteristics that we just talked about may not necessarily be due to emphasis on the group, but because of dense population with very little living, living space. So we talked about this, how small Japan is and how much of Japan is covered in mountains, right? And only about 30 to 40% of the space is actually available to live in. And they've got a hundred and, I think it was 128 million people. So you've got a very, uh, you know, a lot of people living in a very small space. And people essentially had to develop different characteristics in order to live so close together uh, without a lot of conflict. So this is a typical scene in Japan. Um, I remember after I left Japan coming back to, at the time I lived in Iowa, and thinking of, of how lonely and empty it felt, you know, how big the streets were and how few people there were. So it is very densely populated in Japan. How do Japanese benefit from the emphasis on the group? This is really important to note because um, there are quite a few benefits. They're able to achieve consensus without wasting a lot of time and energy. There's not a lot of friction involved in that. People feel much more comfortable if consensus is reached rather than if somebody imposes a decision upon them. Solidary as a solidarity as a nation facilitates national strength. You get a lot done in shorter amount of time possibly with a lot of people working together. It has been um, said that Japan's emphasis on the group has led to their economic and social success and it is the source of identity and pride. So here's an example. This student uh, passed the entrance exam at Tokyo University. That's basically the Harvard of uh, Japan. And you can see all his friends supporting him, right? Just really happy for him. and. Um, you know, perhaps not that hard feelings that might come with perhaps not Gaudi having passed the exam yourself. Um, and then there's a question of terminology. So, you know, we've probably seen the word groupism or collectivism. These are terms that have been replaced or reworked as kanjin or kanjin shugi, which translates as interconnectedness, interpersonalism. Uh, why the difference in terminology and does either one have more negative or positive connotations? Um, well, absolutely, the shift in terminology reflects a, a recognition of the evolving social landscape in Japan, perhaps a desire to move away from potentially negative connotations associated with the term groupism or collectivism, which can sometimes really, if you think about it, be perceived as implying a lack of individual autonomy, uh, perhaps a stifling of personal expression or excessive conformity within a group. On the other hand, newer terms like kanjin shugi or interpersonalism highlight um, a more nuanced perspective and emphasize the positive aspects of relationships, interconnectedness, mutual dependence. And these terms aim to convey a more positive and balanced view of Japanese societal values. They recognize the significance of both individual autonomy and collective harmony. Uh, the gradual decline of emphasis on group and interpersonalism. So, yes, while group harmony and interpersonal relationships have traditionally held great importance in Japanese society, uh, of course, societal changes, shifting values, they've led to a gradual transformation in these dynamic, dynamics. So some of these factors that have contributed to that changing or that shift in values, for example, the first one is changing family structures. You know, we talked about traditional multi-generational households modeled on the EA, which were strongly associated with the importance of group and interpersonal relationships. Now those are less prevalent. Nuclear families now, single person households are more common, resulting in a shift of family dynamics and social interactions. There are also economic and employment changes where the economic landscape in Japan 
has undergone significant shifts. For instance, lifetime employment, uh, which is really once a cornerstone of Japanese corporate culture, has become less prevalent. There is the rise of part-time work, contract jobs, uh, a more flexible labor market has shifted the nature of employment relationships. That has really led to uh, weaker long-term connections and a diminished emphasis on group-oriented uh, loyalty. There are also globalization and cultural influences. This makes sense. Uh, increased exposure to global cultures and ideas, along with influence of Western values, has really impacted Japanese society. Western individualism and ideas of personal freedom and independence have gained traction, and they have challenged traditional notions of group-oriented social structures in Japan. Lastly, I would have to say technological advancements have caused a shift as well. The rise in technology and digital communication has altered social interaction and personal relationships. Online communities, social media networks, they all provide alternative avenues for connection and expression and reduce reliance on face-to-face -face impersonal react interactions. And while the decline of the emphasis on the group and interpersonalism is evident, it's really important to note that these cultural values still play a significant role in Japanese society. Of course, um, elements of group harmony, things like respect for authority, interdependence, they can still be observed in various aspects of Japanese life, albeit with some changing dynamics.